Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, thanks for joining us. As you can see, I did end up jumping back into Forza Horizon today. Um, the reason being... Hang on one second. The reason being is because I needed to do the daily forza -thon challenge so I can get the bonus for this week. And when I decided to do it, I ended up jumping into the Aston Martin DBR1, doing a little race in that. And it ended up reminding me of how much fun it is to race around Edinburgh. And I've never drove this car prior to today and didn't realize it was this much fun to drive it inside of Horizon. So for today what we're going to do is vintage racing throughout Edinburgh. We'll go through the different sprint races, circuit races. Probably won't have time to hit every event that's in Edinburgh today, but do a decent amount of them and we won't just be using the Aston Martin today I've got another car in mind I want to do for some of these races but they're all going to be vintage race cars so besides that I forgot my other day I was gonna open what wheel spins I did have up at the end of the stream so I figure let's do that here at the beginning just for a little filler I've been kinda of wondering if I could get anything decent out of any of these anyways. My last few wheel spins that I've been forced to open after leveling up have been really, really bad. I mean, that's not a horrible start. Hopefully we can do a little bit better than that. I already have the Corvette, but it's a pretty good car. I don't know how the price has been affected in the auction house after they did the update so the values of everything changed but it used to be actually worth a decent little bit really at this point I'm gonna take anything I can get cuz I dumped a bunch of money at the auction house again the other day so kinda need to recoup that that Aston Martin would have been nice over there in the top right I do not have one yet there goes my last Super wheel spin. Let's see what these regular ones will give me. I don't have a ton of them saved up as you can see. I've been kind of using them on and off. I've only been saving these for like a couple days. I already have one of those. Not really a big fan of that platform either for anything really. I don't like racing it, drifting it. Now this is not going so well so far for these regular wheel spins. And it's just getting worse. Come on. Just give me a little something, Forza. I've dumped so much money here the last couple days. Okay, the jacket's kind of cool, but it's still just more clothes. That's more like it. Definitely need more money. I had like 13 million a couple days ago and went down to about 8. I dumped just a bunch of money on cars I really didn't need in the auction house. What can I say though? I'm a huge fan of collecting the cars here in Forza, so if I see something I don't have and it's not at a crazy price, I'm gonna get it. Sixty thousand is not horrible. These wheel spins have not been very good today, though. That's a pretty decent car. I already have it, but it's a pretty decent car. Don't think they're really worth much anymore. Got one more. Come on, not close. If you're gonna give me money, at least give me something decent. Oh my god. This is far away from decent as you could possibly go just about, Horizon. Alright, whatever, can't complain. So, I've already got the first map, or first race marked on the map, I should say. Let's 
go ahead and drive over there. And I just ripped my glove a little bit. But let's go ahead and drive on over there. It's not too far, so we'll just cruise over. Might edit some of this out. This thing has the tiniest windshield wiper I have ever seen in a car. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but like that's just hilariously small. And speaking of the car, it is basically stock. The only thing I did do, I put a raised clutch in it, a racing flywheel, and a, I also did sport valves, which was only 10 horsepower, but it was just enough to kind of get me almost to the very top of B? Yeah, B class. I was going to say, I didn't think I went into A class with this thing. So yeah, it just puts us at the very top of A. It only gave us 10 PI. It's not a huge difference, mostly just going to affect the way the car shifts and the way the RPMs are able to raise. But if you haven't had a chance to drive one of these and you do have it, it's just been sitting in your garage, I'd highly recommend it. It's a very fun car, especially as far as these vintage race cars go to drive. It actually handles surprisingly well and stops surprisingly well, even stock, which is why I didn't really upgrade it very much. I, Like I said, I put 10 PI into it, which is very negligible at best. intending to drift the roundabout but kind of slid around there just trying to set my controller down and just started weaving around the road and the way the weight shifts in this thing just started to go around on me so I just went with it that's what I mean though about this being a fun car it's not quite as oversteery and slippery feeling as it is in a lot of other games especially like hardcore sim titles that you can actually drive this in it definitely stops a little better, but it's really not super far off from how it feels in a lot of other games. But it is a funner experience here in Horizon, because you do have a little bit more grip, and the handling is that just a little bit better than what it is in the other titles. And this is a very fun class to race in, too. You get matched up with a very, very strange variety of vehicles. But they're all from around the same time period, so it makes a pretty cool racing. Oh! Got tagged real hard by the AI. And that's kind of what I mean. The AI drive kind of sloppy and crazy because the cars are so, like, soft and so... have such a tendency just to oversteer on you. That there's definitely some rubbing in it. Sometimes it's a little too aggressive, but it makes the races a lot more fun. And with these kind of cars, a little bit of rubbing and bumping into each other is usually not going to affect the race overall a whole lot. It just makes the battles more interesting. And the reason I went with this circuit for the first race is because it really shows how well this car drives even stock inside a horizon. This is a fairly technical circuit. It's got a lot of different types of corners to it. And it really kind of challenges a vehicle. And because this thing does have fairly soft suspension to it, it does have higher sidewall in the tires, we're able to soak up going over these curves a lot easier, which makes the racing a lot more interesting through here like we got a little air there but it wasn't as bad as if we were in some supercar that's super stiff suspension because it would have literally probably just launched us across the entire track into the other wall a little skip shift from third to first there to kind of help move the rear end around and get me where I need to go. That's another thing I really enjoyed about driving this car. It's got a fairly wide power band, 
and it really gives you kind of room to play around with the power band to assist the car's rotation and driving and slowing down. And I can't remember for sure, but I want to say this thing had like 11 inch drum brakes or 10 inch drums all the way around out of the factory, which they were actually really effective brakes. They just, drum brakes take a lot longer to like really grab and they take longer to get your pads heated up because there's a lot more surface area. But they were actually amazingly effective in this car. I just, I feel like it's a little exaggerated here in Horizon, but you can definitely tell the difference between this DBR1 and a lot of the other vintage cars when it comes to braking. Like, it's absolutely amazing. These are just the stock brakes still. You can tell it's so light and nimble, and I have to say, being a person that drives, like, 99% of the time I'm playing, not recording anything where I might do out of car view, I'm always in cockpit view. It's so nice having that little mirror there on the side and you can actually see everything behind you in this. Alright, so I got our next one marked out here on our map for us. It's going to be the Edinburgh City Sprint. It's a fairly decent size. It's not incredibly long circuit or sprint race. I don't know why I almost said circuit race. Fairly technical, especially for a car of this age. It's going to be a nice little challenge to get it around here and get away with the podium. Okay, let's see how we do with a little bit more difficult now. But yeah, like I was saying, I'd like to know what you guys think of these kind of videos. They're a lot of fun for me to film because. I really enjoy the history of a lot of these older cars, even newer cars, just what went into making them, how they were designed, what makes them good, what might make them bad. Some cars are just horrible to me and I do not like the way they drive at all. But I really enjoy it. I have a lot of fun filming this kind of video and doing these style races. The Jags just do not have the straight line acceleration this thing does at all. I'm honestly surprised they can keep up. They must be upgraded some. Never actually drove that car either in the game, so I'm not sure how much power they do have or how well they drive in here. Honestly, this might be a little too easy still. I might need to go up even higher. I think it see would be pro. I think we do have pro before unbeatable in here. It's been a while since I've done it. It's gets extremely difficult on the wheel, especially if you're driving like S-Class and up, well S1 and up cars. Oh! Was not expecting them to slow down that much through there and was really distracted by what I was saying. I guess I should have known though, because that car does not have the greatest brakes or handling. I have drove it a couple times easily just overtake him on the inside yeah that Maserati it's a great car it is very fast for what it is but it just it doesn't handle that great stock and the brakes were pretty awful from what I remember it's an interesting car to drive you spend a lot of time in first gear very strange, but it does have extremely, extremely tall gears. Or not tall, my bad. Long gears. You can really just kind of pitch this thing around corners. It's pretty insane how well it handles. Yeah, I definitely should have bumped the difficulty up just a little bit higher. This is way too easy in this car. This thing is incredibly fast and handles very well for being B-Class. Yeah, I can't even see my rear, my rear view mirror hardly now. I was going to use the controller to look back and then I thought twice about it because I probably would have went into a wall when it stole focus away from my wheel. 
Oh, you definitely would not want to hit any of that stuff in this car. Would absolutely ruin it. Of course, you wouldn't want to handbrake it through the finish line. So I'm gonna admit here now, I'm definitely not the best here at this circuit. I've not raced it very much and it's not a super challenging layout, but there's a lot of obstacles that's gonna slow you down. And there are some very tight corners that happen in very, very strange elevation changes that make you wanna slide a little more than you would like with understeer anyways into a corner. starting to come up on the pack now. See if we can't make some room through here. This right here is a really nasty section. It's a really fun area right here for drifting though. Just challenging to get a car around it quickly and also avoid going into that first barrier. Looks like we're up into six now. It's not too bad. Coming up behind the Lotus. You gotta really anticipate that little bit of oversteer coming out of corners when you give it some throttle. Unless you're just barely on the gas, you're gonna have a little oversteer at the last little bit coming out of the corner. So you gotta be ready to counter steer, but you wanna counter steer as little as possible so you don't weight shift it the other way and then end up sliding out of control and having to recover from it. Like you can see there, a lot of times for most corners in these style of vehicles, a little oversteer is... Did I miss that checkpoint? I must have got it. But as I was saying, that little oversteer is a lot faster coming out than what it is trying to take it properly without any sliding. Unless you're on really slow corners like that, you're going to probably lose some time trying to slide around through there. Coming on the final lap now. See if I can't sneak up the inside. Just a tiny little bit of contact. And now he's pushing back. Took the faster, wider line there. So I don't think I'm going to be able to catch second and first. Maybe if I can really pull something crazy off but I'm gonna definitely do my best to hold on to third here. That was a very nice line through there. I was able to gain a lot of momentum on them. I can actually see them now. If I could get second place, I would be amazed, but I don't think I have enough time to catch up to them now. They carried a lot of speed coming out of that last corner. Not a bad finish. Now for our last location here, we are gonna be more on the outskirts of Edinburgh, but we're gonna be going to the, what is it, Holyrood or something like that? Circuit, not sure exactly how you say the name of that place, but something along those lines. Out, as much fun as I am having, and I am having a lot of fun in these races, this is really fun driving these cars and pitting them up against these other vintage racers. I really want to get this video over with because I'm starting to really burn up in this little room with no fans or AC running. I leave them off because it just it causes too much background noise in my microphone running them in here while I'm trying to record. And with this much equipment running in my tiny little room I film in, it gets really hot really quick, especially with how hot and humid it's been the last couple days here.
this car is going to be a little bit of a handful, I feel like, to drive here in the rain. I was not expecting this weather. Honestly, I'd be kind of happy with any kind of decent finish, even like halfway up the grid in this one. So we're actually up against some pretty good cars, it looks like, too. In that Aston, we were kind of put up against things that were classed the same. It's fairly similar PI, but they just seemed much, much slower. And this, it looks like we're up against a lot more proper race car builds. Even getting into 10th in this race is putting up quite a battle for me. And yes, that is the stock transmission in the game. This car does have a 6-speed in-game. If I remember, and I'm almost positive, I am correct in this. Oh my gosh. That would, could have been really bad. I couldn't see where I was going at all and just blasted through that corner. Um, but I'm fairly sure I never upgraded the transmission. I don't even know if I actually upgraded it to sport to be able to do a final drive ratio. Ooh. This is a fairly nasty circuit to go around in the rain. And we're in dead last now. <laughs> I mean, I can't really be too surprised having to readjust to the way this car drives after not getting in it so long in here and bumping the difficulty up as high as I have on the wheel. Don't ever do that to your transmission, kids. I was just trying to save. I can't believe I just did that. I was trying to get back over, but it's so wet, and then hitting that off-road there just kept kind of pulling me off. Yeah, this is not going to be a good race. I was kind of expecting it not to go the best for me, especially once I saw the rain, but mostly because I think I've only drove here one time. I don't think I ever raced in this circuit layout again, which is why I wanted to do it for this video. Because it's a fairly large circuit, or circuit compared to a lot of the other ones here in Horizon. And it looked fairly challenging, which it is. There is a lot of elevation change and blind corners on this map. I don't even know if I'm going to... Oh, I might be able to make a little move up here if I don't screw it up. Make a little room for me. Oh, he's really pushing. Come on. Can I get one more? Oh, now it's starting to get a little sunny. I think it's raining harder though, even though I did get a little bit sunny out. These are some pretty quick cars. Looks like we have a fairly similar grid this time. Thankfully, we're not in rain. It does look like the road, yep, yeah, the road is definitely a little wet. At least there's better visibility this time around though. And we're not on such a mountainy, hilly circuit where we can't see where we're going. Just about annihilated that Ferrari. Oh, the GT40 just about took us out. Oh, I'm gonna sandwich. Why would they ever try to go three wide through there? AI is real aggressive once you go up in difficulty, that's for sure. Oh no! Oh, I held on to it. I cannot believe I held on to that. 
especially with this being mid-engine, I thought for sure the rear was going to wash out and we were going to be done. It would be absolutely terrifying to drive one of these cars this fast with this just absolute lack of anything that's going to save you in a crash. If anything, everything in this car is designed for you to die upon impact so you don't suffer through it. And it just keeps pulling. That's the amazing thing. Oh my gosh. This is such a crazy layout, I forgot how fast it is through here and into the wall. It did fairly well making it through the technical part and then just kind of messed it up on that elevation change. Definitely made some time up going through that or through there that quickly. Oh no, understeer. I think that was partially my fault. I think I might have locked the brakes up just a little bit. I am driving in sandals again today and it makes it a little difficult to judge your pedal feel. Or pedal pressure, I should say. I don't get much pedal feel. Well, we got six. I'm definitely happy with that overall. It's, it's an interesting race too. Not quite as close as some of them, but the beginning of it was very, very close and a lot of battling for positions right off the bat. Alright guys, well, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of these. I'd really like to do them more. They're a lot of fun. Not specifically with this style of car or even in this area of the map, but just in general, even at the LEGO map. Also, if you guys have any ideas you would like to see me try out on here, or any style of racing you want to see me do on the wheel, leave that in the comments too. I'm more than happy to give it a shot. It's a lot of work trying to think of ideas for videos six days a week. But if you guys did enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I somehow almost just flipped backwards. And I'll see you guys next time.